Magnus Carlsen won the second set in the semi-final against Jan Yapon Nishi. So they went into a tie-break of two blitz games. First blitz game was drawn, and I'm going to show you what happened in the second blitz game. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let's hit the 100k. But also, if you want to support the channel, then do check out patreon.com powerplaychess and, well, you can see what rewards you can get there for your contributions. Right, here we go. So, second blitz game. And we join the game deep into the middle game. If you don't mind, it's rather a long game. We're not going to go through everything. So, we're in this position with queen and rook each. Level pawns. But you can see that Nepo's pawns are split here. That's the bad news from Black's viewpoint. You can see that that queen is putting pressure on the pawns. The good news is that Nepo has managed to gain some space on the king side. And that has consequences. Because it's not so easy for White's king to actually find um, a, a good safe square there. And, well, let me show you what the consequence of that is straight away. If queen takes pawn, doesn't win a pawn, <laughs> it loses a queen. After rook check, the king can't come up because the queen covers. And so rook takes rook, queen takes queen. So it's actually incredibly difficult for Carlsen to put any more pressure on these isolated pawns because white's king is actually not, uh, well, doesn't have a really secure spot, basically. But it's a blitz game, and the players are just moving really quickly. Carlsen going around in circles a little bit, trying to find a way in. It's his kind of position, really, but Nepo holding firm. Queen e6. Queen a6. I think Carlsen is hoping that perhaps Nepo will, you know, crack and play g4, which actually could well give um, White some chances it actually rather breaks open black's king you know white can defend with king h2 um but nepo holds firm played very carefully with queen d6 and again rook takes pawn will allow the rook coming down there and that's well that's obviously fatal again the king can't escape queen e2 and queen g6, threatening the rook on b1, rook a1, queen e4. So the player's just kind of shuffling around at the moment. Nothing much going on. And, and you know, I was watching this live and thinking, this is going to be a draw. And we're heading into the old Armageddon game. But no, well, let's see what happened. Um, well, once again, it's Nepo's move. It must have, must have been so tempting to push this pawn but actually as i said after king h2 it's hard to see how black can get any further in that position but nepo played much better he played rook c4 queen came back to b1 and now queen c6 and suddenly i'm thinking wow how did that happen nepo seems to have got the initiative um the queen and rook look very nicely placed there you know, maybe rook c2 is a possibility. Uh, maybe just pushing the b pawn. So Carson played queen f5. Excellent move. He's counterattacking on the king side, so threatening the pawn. Nepo checked with the rook, forcing an exchange. And the king came up and queen c7. And once again, I thought, well, we're heading for a draw. The king is going to come back to g1 and... Queen check, and so on. It's uh, it's going to be a draw very quickly. But no, Carlsen played pawn to g3, which looks really ugly. Because after pawn takes pawn, you're thinking, well, pawn takes pawn isn't going to help at all. Because it exposes white's king and, and just sort of makes these pawns look really ugly. Um, I mean, the queen could just come back here. To defend those pawns. Um, yeah, it just positioning it doesn't look very attractive. But that wasn't Carlson's idea. His thought was after pawn takes pawn, 
just to play king g2. Now he played this so quickly. It's a really clever idea. If pawn takes pawn, queen takes pawn on g5, check. Queen takes d5. With every prospect of picking up this pawn, white is a pawn up and has some chances. Wow. Very clever. Therefore, Nepo just dropped back with the queen to defend the pawn on g5 and also defend the pawn on d5. So king takes pawn, but that seemed like a reasonable transaction from Carlson's point of view. But now Nepo hit back. Suddenly, the b pawn starts to roll down the board. Counterplay. Although his kingside, well, he's holding firm at the moment, but it doesn't look beautiful. But this b pawn is going to give counterplay. So Carlson had to fall back. Queen b1. Tell you, queen and pawn endgame so complicated. Queen check. King f3. And b4. And the queen came up to b3 to blockade. And queen check. Now, here, king's in check. Where would you play with the king? What do you think the best square is? Just your, your gut feeling. You're playing a blitz game. You're playing, you're playing Nepo. Where would you move your king? Well, Carlson played the king to g2. To me, it looks so much more natural to play the king to e2. I mean, it's pretty safe behind those pawns. But if necessary, it can come over to cover the b pawn in case that queen goes wandering or whatever. But king g2. And the queen came back to d6. And now Carlson played king g1. Well, he could have wandered over with the king with king f1 or indeed king f3. But king g1 looks, looks a bit funny. f6. King g2, queen b6, so certainly looks very risky to take that pawn, hoping for a perpetual. It might not be there because that b pawn would run. So Carlson played an interesting move. He played pawn to h4, looking for counterplay on the king side. Pawn takes pawn, king h3, queen b5, king takes pawn. Now, black would very much like to play the queen c4 to push away white's queen. But watch what happens. Queen c4, queen a4. And when the pawn pushes, queen d7. And it's quite clear that that's going to be petrol check. So back we come. King takes h4 just played. So instead of pushing the queen straight away, Nepo first shuffled across with the king. So that makes a lot of sense. If you can bring the king over here somewhere and then play queen c4, well, the king is going to be free. There's going to be no perpetual check and you can start to roll that pawn. So, Carlson brought the king over. King e6, black's king moving across, king f4. Now, I guess king d6 is possible, but... At this point, Nepo decided, I'm going in. The king is a lot safer than in terms of trying to avoid the perpetual uh, than on g7. Queen a4, remember, they have very little time left. It's a blitz game. b3. But if anyone is trying to win now, then of course it's Nepo with this far advanced pass pawn. The question is, can Carlson with white draw the game by perpetual check? If he keeps checking, the problem is that that king is going to find a way through somehow round here, or perhaps via b b4 into c3. You know, that's that's going to be a, a key route basically into the position. And once the king is this side then it's going to be able to support the pawn. It certainly escapes the perpetual. So actually, checking doesn't work. Carlson played here king f5. Mistake. 
he should have played king f3. Now, working out why king f3 is a better move is tricky, but let me show you. So king f5 played, queen b5 clearly wants to drive away the queen, white's queen, and then push that b pawn through. Queen c8, so Carlson looking for a perpetual now. And he plays queen b8 check. Now, after queen b8, the king escaped round the other side to a5, and Nepo was in. What about queen d8 to prevent the king coming to a5? Watch what happens. King b7. There's only one check for white. King c8. Only one, well, yeah, only one decent check for white. Queen f8. And if queen e7, we play. Are you ready? Boom! Queen d7 check. White is forced to exchange queens. And then the b pawn will go through. That's why the king was far better placed on f3. Imagine if the king's on f3, then white can still check. And actually, that should be a draw by perpetual, basically. So, quite deep. Not something you're, you're going to discover uh, very easily in a blitz game where you're just making moves so quickly. But that is why king f5 is a mistake. Queen b5 played, and now the king, as I said, manages to run round the other side. And now the king is, is uh, safe. Queen e2, still no checks. King e6, I mean, this is a forlorn hope now. b2, the pawn is going through. Um, if king b, if uh, queen b1, we give a check, and then queen a1, and the pawn queens on the next turn. So b2, queen, and well, I mean it's it's completely lost now. Carlson made a bit of a joke. I, I assume it was a joke, or it might have been a mouse slip. I don't know. He played queen a6, and Nepo spotted it. Queen takes queen, and game over. So. Uh, Yanni Pomnishi goes through into the final and he will meet Anish Giri, who won pretty comfortably against Wesley. So, not what I expected, but Wesley seemed to crumble. Um, there were three draws, and then at the end, in the fourth game, Wesley, um, yeah, just made a, a simple oversight. Um, well, after the game, Nepo said, well, the, it, you know, the tiebreak was basically a lottery. Um, yeah, what did he say? He said something like, clearly today was a lottery and I was the one who got the winning ticket, said Nepo. Carlson said, ultimately, what decided the match was that he managed to keep his head in the blitz and I most certainly did not. Well, yeah, I would agree with that. You know, there were moments when Nepo could have kind of lunged out with G4, for example, but he held back and kept his cool. Uh, he did very well indeed. Well, there you go. Uh, action coming up in the final on Saturday and Sunday between Nepo and Giri. I look forward to that. See you soon.